Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, we're going to be finishing up the level editor tutorial. This is part two. So if you don't know anything about that, you need to go back and watch the first video. I will post a little card for you to click on now in the top right. So go ahead and watch that first, and then you can get to this part. So in part two, what we're going to be doing is adding some functionality, and that's going to be uh, the ability to save and load objects. It's really not so bad. We're just going to have to modify things a little bit. Let's go ahead and look at how it works now. So right now, we use the scroll bar to change into different tiles, and we can place them. Also, we can delete them by going back to the initial position here, the, the nullified position, and then uh, mousing over, it'll delete them. Then we can press, uh, I believe it was 1 to save, or no, 2 to delete and 1 to load. So 2 deletes it and 1 loads it right back from the array. This is all being saved into an, an array, and it is a one-dimensional array. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is insert some active objects. So we're going to pop a few around here. And these are going to be uh, some objects that we can place into the world with our editor. So let's go ahead and insert a few now. Three should do it. Right, I'm going to give these guys some art real quick. Okay, so we got three objects now. We got a weird looking black face. Uh, we got a gym and we have a sun. All right, so we're going to grab all these, select all of these objects, and we're going to go on over here to the properties tab. And we're going to give these dudes a qualifier. I'm going to give them the qualifier of zero, but you can give them whatever qualifier you want. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. If we look on the tile placer, the way we did this before is we place the tiles by pasting the current animation of uh, this object into the background. But we're going to do something totally different for the objects. So what we need to do is you need to reserve a certain number, uh, a certain number for tiles. So for example, uh, a good number might be 100 if you were going to have 100 tiles. Anything past 100 we're going to use for objects. Um, so that's how we're going to do this, because we're not we're not pasting the objects in the background uh, as obstacles. We are going to actually create them based on a name. So let's assume for this purpose that we're going to uh, have 100 be our number reserved for tiles. So 101 would be our first object. So what we're going to do is name these objects accordingly. So this object needs to be he needs to be named 101. This next one here is 102. And this next one here is 103. Now keep in mind, this is not necessarily the best way to do this, or even the only way. Obviously, this is just the way I'm doing it. So if you can come up with something better, feel free to do that. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. Select all these dudes, and we need to go here. We do not want to create these at start. We want to create these through uh, the editor. So uncheck Create at Start. Okay, we need to make another object throw in another active object down here. And what this is going to be is a button. And this is a button we're going to press to toggle between placing tiles and placing objects. So I'm going to give this a little bit of art to indicate. Um, OK, so we're going to need, first things first, we need to make sure the speed is 0, because we do not want this to animate. All right, I'm just going to make this like a blue button. And I'm going to put some text on it. The first one is going to be tiles. Oops. And for the second one, it's going to be objects. OK, so there's our little button down there. Now we need to modify some stuff. So let's go ahead and grab this comment and post a new comment down here. And this is going to be um, essentially, I don't know, toggle between objects and tiles. So we're going to do that by going to the mouse object and say um, user clicks on an object, single click with left click, and that is going to be the active object here. I didn't name it. Let's name it real quick. Let's call it toggle button. All right, so we got our toggle button there. Anyway. So when we click on the toggle button, also we want to make sure this doesn't happen constantly or it'll flip back and forth too fast. So we need to limit this condition. So we're going to go, we're going to, go to special and we're going to go to limit conditions, restrict actions, and we're going to do that for about 50 milliseconds. And you can obviously uh, you know, tweak that to 
get the best feel for your particular editor. Okay, so when we click on this, what we're gonna wanna do is toggle a flag. So toggle flag zero. I need to resize that box because it's freaking huge. All right, so toggling flag zero. So now based on the flag, we're gonna change the animation of this button. So flag, is it off, which is the default state. So flag zero is off. We are going to change the animation frame to uh, zero. All right, so down here, we need to do this again, check for the other flag. Flag is it on, that was flag zero. And if that is the case, we're gonna force the animation to frame one. Now we're just gonna drag this down because that's easier. Right click and edit, and I'm gonna change that to one. Okay, so that toggles our flag. So if we go and look at it, we can find out that we can toggle between objects and tiles. All right, perfect. Okay, um, up here though, we wanna make, something can happen that we don't want to have happen. And that is, right now we can be drawing something. And if we click on tiles, it'll actually, it'll paste it. And we don't wanna do that. We wanna, don't wanna obviously create things under our button. So where we paste is on line 14. So we wanna go in here and insert a condition. And that is, we wanna make sure that the mouse uh, we want to check to see if it's over an object. So check for my mouse pointer over an object, and that is going to be our button. And then we want to negate that. So we're only going to be able to paste these objects when we're not mouse overing this button. That way we won't run into that problem. Okay, so we do want to, if, obviously when we run this game, or this editor, uh, we can see what we're going to paste in advance. So when we go to tiles, as you, or objects rather, you can still see the tiles. Um, and so what we're going to need to do is create another animation and we're going to need to actually populate that with the objects instead of the tiles. We're going to, we're going to toggle between these based on the state of this button and we're going to show that so that we can see what we're going to paste. So we're going to do that now. Let's go ahead and just, uh, actually here, I'll just go over to these objects and I will copy their arc and I'm going to throw it in over in the next animation, we'll say walking, that'll work just fine. Also got to make sure that the hotspot is in the top left because that's what we're using for this editor, otherwise they will be off center. So go ahead and do that for all your objects. Oh, also got to make sure that the objects themselves have their hotspot in the top left because when they're being created, uh, it's just the way it's going to need to be. So go ahead and do that too. I somehow messed that up. That was totally off center. Make sure everything is uh, properly aligned with the hotspot in the top left. Um, also forgot, we need to actually also have our reticle as well on the walking animation. So make sure that is the first animation frame. And all the other animation frames should be your objects. Okay, so whenever this, uh, this toggle button, the flag zero is off, that means that we have tiles selected. So then we need to go to our tile placer object and change the animation to represent that. So go to animation, change, animation sequence, and that is stopped, stopped is our tiles, and uh, walking is our objects. So scroll down here, or rather drag down here. We're gonna edit this. Dragging and editing is usually the fastest way to get things done in Click Team Fusion, so make sure you do it that way. All right, select walking, for that, and let's give it a test to make sure that we didn't screw something up. Okay, so we got our tiles here. Let's put it on objects, and now we have objects. Oh, I made a mistake up here, guys. Um, I negated the wrong thing. I negated repeat while left mouse key is pressed, not mouse pointer is over the toggle button. So we want to negate that. We want to make sure that when we uh, drop objects in, that the mouse pointer is not over the toggle button. Let's see if we can paste things in. All right, we're good. Now, as you see, we can paste these in, uh, but these are just tiles with right now because we're grabbing them off of the tile selector, and that's not what we want to do. So we need to differentiate between which state we're in, either tiles or objects. So we're going to do that this way. Um, let's go ahead and throw another comment in right down here. And we will say object placing. And after we do that, we need to uh, modify these a little bit to make sure that we are in the the proper mode. So this is our tile placing code. So we want to insert this here and find out if the flag 
zero is off for our uh, button here. Because if it's off, that means we are in tile mode. Boom. Okay, so we want to copy these because it's going to be similar. Paste it in. And um, though we also now want to find out not if it's off, but if the flag is on. So go ahead and insert a condition that finds out if our flag is on. And that flag is flag zero. So if that is the case, then we know that we are in object placing mode. Okay, so in object placing mode here, we don't, uh, when <clears throat> what we did before, like on line 18 or 15, because they're pretty much the same thing, is that is whenever the tile equals zero, it's null, and we were deleting it. And we were doing that by using the storyboard controls, which allows us to delete a created backdrop at an X and Y position in a specific layer. Since we're making objects, we don't want to do that. Um, we want to actually delete objects. So what we're going to do, we still want to write the, vial, the value of tile to the current array position because the value will be zero. And that means that uh, if something, if we delete something, we want to nullify it and zero is our null value. So we'll keep that there. But we want to need, what we want to do is change this here where we delete the created backdrops. Get rid of that. We don't want that. Add another stipulation here. Find out if the mouse is over group zero. So check for mouse pointer over an object and that is group zero, meaning that the mouse is over a um, an object. We're doing that so that we can scope the appropriate group zero object. Okay, so all we need to do now then is go up to group zero and select destroy. So that will destroy that particular object and it will create a null value in our array position. Okay, so in line 17, this is where we're actually pasting the object. Now, we, like I said, um, we were setting it up so that the tiles had 100 tiles reserved. So we actually need to do something here to make this a little different. As you see on line 14, what we're doing is we're writing the value of tile. And um, we essentially want to do the same thing, except we want to add 100 to that, because anything past 100 is reserved for objects. So uh, what was set up as the, the tile position 1, which is our first object, is actually going to be uh, it's going to be it's going to be written to into the array as 101 that's what we want to do so we do that this way we go to where we here we'll just add this where we have a write value tile placer we want to add 100 to that so all that's going to do is going to write the value of tile plus 100 to our position uh, we do not need paste into background as obstacle because what we're doing is creating objects so delete that instead go to the create new object um, object so, and we want to do something called create object by name. And since we name them according to numbers, this becomes pretty easy. All we want to do is grab the value from tile placer of tile. <clears throat> and then we want to add 100 to that. Now, it needs to be a name, which is a string. So we got to turn this to a string, but that's very easy. We just type str dollar sign and put it into parentheses. And that's all we got to do. That will convert that to a string. And um, oh, we got to create the object somewhere, though. We want it to be relative to our tile placer. So let's see if that works. We might have messed something up. All right, so this is just some tiles. Let's paste some tiles around. And let's go and switch to objects. So I can switch to my objects. And I am creating objects. Now, though, if we delete them with two, as you can see, they're not deleted. Um, so let's find, it also breaks everything, but that's very easy to fix. There's a very simple reason for that. So uh, when we press two, that's how we destroy everything. So on line 21, where it says delete all created backdrops in layer one, we also want to destroy all of group zero because those are our objects. So add a destroy um, event there. So that'll clean that up. So we'll see, we can, uh, now we can also delete our, it'll delete everything when we press two now. So that works perfectly. Now, the reason everything, watch, I'll show you. Everything gets a little messed up when we load. So let's put some tiles down, and let's put down some objects. So if I leave it the way it is, if I press 2 to delete and 1 to spawn, we have all objects. And the reason that is is because the animation for our placer is still on walking, not on idle. 
or stopped. So we need to make sure that whenever we generate that we first put the um, value or rather the animation of tile placer back to stopped. So do that now. Go to animation, change, animation sequence, and stopped. Let's go in here and make sure the order is proper. We want to make sure that we change the animation sequence to stop before we start that loop or it'll be out of order and it won't, it won't do what we want to do. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We got that finished. Um, now we need to generate, and while generating, we need to make sure that we can also create objects because right now, all we're doing on a loop is generating a grid, uh, changing the value or the animation to the value that was placed in the array, and then pasting that into the background as an obstacle. But that's not what we want to do for objects. We have to create them. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste this here. Um, also, we need to re, uh, reserve this information from, we need to grab the current value from, uh, from the array, and we need to plug it into a variable. We're gonna make a new variable. So go ahead and click on our tile placer and add a new variable. We're gonna call obj. It's, it's just better, we're gonna keep it separated from the tile value. <clears throat> Okay, so on loop gen, this is where we want to do this. So what we're going to do is go to alterable values, and we're going to set the value of object to the current value of the x, y, and z of our array. So go to the array, and simply click on read value from current position. So that's going to grab that, that value. So we're going to essentially, we are plugging in whatever the tile value is into this variable, and we're going to be able to check it now. Uh, we're going to be able to check against it. So Let's do that for both of these. We need to find out if first the alterable value of object is lower or equal to 100. And if it's lower or equal to 100, that, that way we know this is for, uh, when this is true, we are creating tiles because anything above 100, if you remember, is an object. So that'll work fine for pasting into background as obstacle. So let's go ahead and copy this, throw it in here as well. And uh, we want to find out if it is greater than 100. So if if object is greater than 100, we know that we are creating objects, not tiles. So delete paste into background as obstacle. And all we got to do is go here to the creation object, create object by name. And the name is str dollar sign. And then grab from the array. We want to read value from current position, close it off with a bracket, and press OK. We need to create this relative to our tile placer. All right, run this and see what happens. Let's put down some tiles. Let's change that over to objects. Let's delete it and press one and it worked. We now have a, gener a tile editing um, software here, a program that cr uh, can save and load both objects and backdrops. And obviously these don't do anything right now because they have no code associated with them, but you could have these be enemies or power-ups or, you know, whatever. They are active objects. They can do whatever you need them to do. So really this isn't so hard, guys. Um, I hope you found this educational and useful and that wasn't that difficult. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below and I will do my best to get back to you. Or uh, you could also hop into my Discord. As always, that's a fantastic place to meet people, um, make some games together, and learn to learn to be better at your craft. All right, guys, and thank you for watching this video. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic day.